the evening and welcome to Tinkering with Edkelar. Last summer, when I got the Fluke 8040, the same seller also offered this little beauty here. A vacuum tube voltmeter, or VTVM for short. Since I like old school technology, I just couldn't let this one go to waste, especially when looking at the feature set. VTVMs normally provide voltage ranges only, hence the name. To find one that has various voltage options for AC and DC, an ohmmeter and also some current measurement options is quite rare. This is basically a very early idea of a multimeter. And who could resist a wooden carry box for field use? Sweet! Future Edkela here. The project turned out to be way longer than anticipated. I decided to make a two-parter out of it to keep the video within reasonable length. First assessments are, well, mixed. The unit seems to be complete, including the active high-frequency probe that was originally sold as an add-on. The case has clearly seen better days. The plywood lamination is separating on the lid, the plastic feet are disintegrating and one is missing completely. And by the looks of it, some water damage. At least I hope it was water. The meter itself is in what I consider mediocre shape. The panel doesn't have any scratches, but there's glue residue on one part. Maybe an old inventory sticker? And one of the current measurement checks has something stuck in it. And on the inside... Oh my god! There is the typical dull discoloration of white rust on everything. I do get the feeling that this device had a water incident in its lifetime indeed. It might have been stored on the outside with just minimal rain protection for decades. Also, there are some wax capacitors along with an electrolytic one. These need to go. The probes are another source of grief and indicate even more moisture exposure. The plugs are nice and shiny, while the springs that protect the cable are rusted almost through. Yuck! The cables are also way too stiff and the insulation is breaking off. Oh, and the alligator clips completely rusted. Tips? Nope again. The standard ones is broken off and the HF ones is missing altogether. From all the components, the probes are in the worst condition. So let's start by taking care of them, shall we? Looking at the high frequency one first, as I learned that there might be another tube hiding inside. And yes, here it is. A cute little one at that. The cable is beyond useful. But finding a replacement will be hard. Twin-X cables aren't common these days. The probe uses one wire for the heater voltage and the other for the signal. Combined with the shield for ground. The only thing that I could find that was even close to the format was a microphone audio cable. Let's see how well that performs. It should be an easy swap if I find something better later on. I disassembled the lot to clean and polish the plastic parts at least a little bit.
for the rusted springs I found a few suitable replacements in an assorted set. Not exactly the right diameter, but close enough. Up next, the regular probe. It is used for voltage and resistance measurements and has a switch to toggle between DC and AC or ohms measurements. Hmm, that switch is pretty crusty rusty. If any sliding switch I ever disassembled needed that treatment, it is this one. Also, the case of the probe looks quite warped. Did that thing get hot at some time? Cleaning the switch. Um, that stuff isn't rust. It rubs right off. Also, it didn't seem to have affected the metal part at all. So not typical acid either. But then I discovered that the nuts and bolts have actually melted into the plastic of my parts bin. Yikes! What is that stuff? Is that the cause of the malformed probe maybe? The probe originally has a regular coax cable, but I really like how flexible that twinax one is that I got for the HF probe, so again, until I find something better, I'll just use the same one on this probe and tie the two conductors together. The regular probe's tip is broken off. I wrongfully assumed that the center was screwed in and only realized that mistake during many failed attempts of getting the stuck part out of there. Eventually, I just tapped the hole I made. Now to the missing tips. The high frequency probe's contacts are screw in posts. Originally, there was a pin for the hot side and a screw for the ground side supplied. Both are missing. The new tips come out of some brass stock I had around. I don't have the original measurements, but eyeballing a nice tip shape is enough for sure. The surfaces of the tip posts need a new coat of nickel, as do the new tips. I did try to compensate for the molten grip by adding a bit of tape, but the result didn't fit under the cover plate anymore, so I ditched that plan.
A typical PC case screw works nicely for the missing one. And that makes it for the newly revived probes. Now on to... The case. I started by removing all the hardware, which is a smidge rusted, but not too much. A bit of sanding and some bluing helped a ton. This way it looks old, but still without rust. Nice! The lid was missing a few chunks and some layers were coming apart in the lamination. I removed the loose parts and glued a new sheet of plywood to it. I rather have used a better quality ply, but the wood color should at least be close, so I had to go with the cheap stuff I had around. After trimming the new part and sanding down the entire outside of the box, I applied a total of three coats of wax finish. It brought the color of the replacement piece very close within the original color. A bit of staining first would have also helped. But I like the result still. The broken feet needed replacements. Can you say OpenSCAD and 3D printing? I tried to find similar new ones, but to keep the style right, I went with the printed versions. And now, the inside. There's a little section in the box to keep the probes and power lead, and I put in some lining. Mostly to keep the probes from banging around in there, but the look is also quite nice. Next operation, putting the badge back on. And that's it for this episode, tune in next time when I finish up the inside of the meter and try to find out what is wrong with it. Oh, and the alligator clips? Rusted. Tips? Nope. Again. Nope again. Not nope. Again. Ha. Again. <laughs>